Hello guys, Ancient Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. As for this video, we're gonna have a video that was requested several times across the years and I never made it, but I'm making it and releasing it now. <laughs> yeah, boy. Which is the driver only versus minimal install versus full install on the AMD drivers. As soon as you're installing the drivers, you have the options that, well, if you go to the advanced settings, of course, you have those options on the AMD drivers. You have the option to install driver only, for example, if you're having issues with the AMD software kit, might happen. You can do a minimal installation that doesn't bring all the features that the full installation does, which is obvious, but we will be talking about those features in the final thoughts. And then we have the question, do these three installation methods affect the performance, the overall performance, your gaming experience? And this is one of the questions that people have been asking me for quite some time, and that's why I'm making this video right now. So once again, Will this affect the performance? Let's go into it. But before, let's go into today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is Maximum Settings, a cloud-based gaming service where you won't need to spend thousands of dollars to upgrade your PC or a personal nuclear plant to boot up your system. Just do it! And for as low as 9.95 Canadian dollars a month, you can play the most recent games on your computer, even if your hardware isn't prepared. Sign up today for your full Linux gaming PC with no resource sharing and start enjoying high-level gaming on any PC. So, performance. Starting with Avatar Frontiers of Pandora and the RX 6700 XT, at both 1080p and 1440p we have some odd results, especially at 1080p where it seems that the driver only has slightly higher average FPS, but at the same time it somehow got way lower 1% lows, which is sincerely unexpected. Really odd. With the RX 7700 XT though, things were basically in line as they should be, with all results staying within the margin of error, which is great. Banisher's Ghosts of New Eden is a new addition to our benchmark suite, and now the RX 6700 XT brings the results it ideally should, with a minimal and full installation results not reducing the performance. And the same applies to the RX 7700 XT that has constantly the same results across the board with all three configurations. Microsoft Flight Simulator seems to be no exception here as well with the RX 6700 XT where all results are within the expected, bringing no performance losses whatsoever by using the full installation mode. As we test the RX 7700 XT, at 1080p we're bottlenecked by the 8700G in this game, of course, so I believe the issue with the frame fluctuations here is due to that, and not because of the driver installation modes per se. Far Cry 6 is another very CPU-dependent game, and I mean not CPU-heavy, but CPU-dependent, well, at least if you want those high FPS numbers, of course. And now we can see a really small but consistent difference in between the full installation and the others, where the full installation had slightly lower averages, but still nothing that anyone would notice in real world, let's say that. With the RX 7700 XT, things are slightly different, and we do have the FPS bouncing a bit more back and forward regarding performance. But once again, apart from the 1% lows at 1440p, everything is inside the margin of error. Spider-Man Remastered is one of the most CPU and RAM dependent games we have out there, and once again I I'm talking about high FPS numbers. Although it seems that the full installation is still superior here, delivering slightly higher FPS on the RX 6700 XT. And the same exact thing happens with the RX 7700 XT, where we have the full installation delivering somehow better averages, but lower 1% lows compared to the driver-only installation, with the minimum installation being, oddly, slightly slower here. Starfield is one of those titles that still needs a lot more of optimization, to be sincere, but at the same time it is a very good CPU benchmark for that same reason, and of course a very stable one. And I'm saying this because in here it seems that the driver only performs slightly better, but once again, nothing that you could notice in real-world scenarios. But with the RX 7700 XT, the differences are a bit bigger, meaning that in this game, with a faster GPU like the 7900 XT or XTX, the difference could be bigger, as full installation is delivering lower FPS numbers across the board, even at 1440p. 
The Last of Us is more or less like Starfield, possibly a bit more optimized of course, but still really heavy on the CPU, and even with the RX 6700 XT we can see the driver only performing slightly better at 1080p, where the CPU overhead matters the most, but once again it is a really tiny difference that no one would notice. The 7700 XT delivers equal results across the board, which is a good thing, and in case you didn't notice, the results aren't switched. The RX 7700 XT is actually performing slower at 1080p than the RX 6700 XT. And I believe it is because of smart access memory being broken in this title with the specific card, the 7700 XT, something that I already commented with AMD directly. But focusing only on the results, everything is inside the margin of error as well. The Witcher 3 is another scenario where the RX 6700 XT is working pretty well at 1080p delivering around 80 average FPS with all results being inside the margin of error as this was a gameplay test so margins are a bit bigger. With the RX 7700 XT we have higher FPS outputs, obviously, with the driver only being the only one delivering slightly higher results in both averages and 1% lows. But the difference is sincerely so small that once again no one would notice it. And since it seems the driver only performs better mostly in situations that are CPU bound, we have now Counter-Strike 2, and even here the difference is barely noticeable even at 1080p and over 300 average FPS. So I don't think anyone should have to care about it here, so yeah. With the RX 7700 XT we had some more variations at 1080p, with the drivers only delivering higher 1% lows and a minimum installation being the worst performer at 1080p. Still, the 10 average FPS difference here only stands as a 2% difference. So once again, yeah. Moving to Modern Warfare 2, we have once again the same exact scenario with the RX 6700 XT, where absolutely nothing changes at 1080p, but at 1440p we did have the driver only delivering slightly higher results, in this case by 4% something that did not translate to the RX 7700 XT that once again, besides the variances in the 1% lows, delivers more or less the same results with all configurations. Hogwarts Legacy is another title that I wanted to bring due to its CPU power needs, especially in places like Hogsmeade. At 1080p we had some odd results with the RX 6700 XT that performed considerably worse with a minimal installation, something that sincerely shouldn't be happening, but it did. As we move to the RX 7700 XT, I get my mind blown as now it is the minimal installation that gives us better results, which makes absolutely no sense. And let me tell you that the tests were done the right way. But it seems that the in, in tests in CPU bound scenarios, let's say that, in this game fluctuate quite a lot. And it shouldn't, of course. Although at 1440p it is nice with all results being inside the usual margin. As for League of Legends, I asked my brother to test it as well, it was done with the RX 7700 XT only as it was already done testing with the RX 6700 XT. Still things get, well, interesting once again. It is obviously we have a CPU bottleneck here, which is nothing new for a game like this that on the GPU side it could run on a fridge, but what we can see is that the driver only configuration tends to work slightly worse than the other two ones as opposite to the other tests, which being honest is interesting to see. Moving to Fortnite using Nanite and TSR, with the RX 6700 XT we have virtually the same results across the board with a very stable result as well, something that gets religiously translated to the RX 7700 XT that also delivers the same exact results across the board at both resolutions, showing that Fortnite does not really care about the installation method for a single second. And to finalize we have Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, also a very CPU demanding title if you are pushing those very high FPS numbers, but even here we can see that the results are more or less on par regardless of the installation method. And the same goes for the RX 7700 XT that delivered results on par with what was expected, so nothing really new here. And going to the average RX 6700 XT results, you can see that overall the performance difference in between the three installation methods was basically null, with the biggest difference not even reaching 2%, which is what I would consider the margin of error most times. And we can say the same about the RX 7700 XT, where the results differences didn't even reach 1%, so overall performance-wise they were the same. 
So let's now talk about the differences features wise. And well, guys, now as for the final thoughts, as you could see, the performance difference in between these three installation methods was, well, minimal. I would say even non-existent because the results overall are virtually the same. There is one or two scenarios where the driver only or the minimum installation have more FPS, but there are others where the full installation also has a bit more FPS. So it depends on the scenario, it depends on the game. It seems that the difference is more noticeable in terms of CPU overhead in some scenarios, but once again, I wanted to test cards like the 6700 XT and the 7700 XT, which are basically mid-tier cards nowadays, low to mid-tier cards, and I wanted to test them since these are the cards, the tier of cards that most people will have, and that's why I wanted to test them. Still, uh, if you have, for example, a 7900 XT or a 7900 XTX, the differences might be slightly bigger, especially, once again, in terms of CPU-bound scenarios, like, let's say, Hogwarts Legacy, Counter-Strike 2, and so on. But overall, as you saw, the difference is null, and people saying that driver only works better or full installation or minimal installation works better and doesn't give them any problems is because, well, maybe, maybe the problem is sitting in between the chair and the monitor, which is usually the user. And I'm not saying that's the case 100% of times because, of course, software has issues here and there. But most times, those issues are created by the user. But, well, let's forget about that. I just want to show you uh, some differences in between the driver only, minimal installation and full installation. So, uh, what I could notice from installing the three versions and, well, testing them, I could notice that, for example, in terms of driver only, the only thing that doesn't seem to work fine 100% of times for 100% of uh, people is FreeSync. As soon as you have a FreeSync certified monitor, FreeSync will be activated all the time all the time. But if you have, for example, a, a VRR compatible monitor, basically not FreeSync certified, it has adaptive refresh rate, but not FreeSync um, certified, well, in some scenarios, it might not be enabled with a driver only. Since you, and since you don't have the kit to, well, to change the features, yeah. As for the minimal installation, well, the minimum installation, well, it doesn't have the main menu like we do have on the full installation, that gives you several options right from the start, uh, several, well, it, let's say it's just more beautiful, the, the full installation menu. Also doesn't have the recording and streaming options that you have on the full installation. There's no overclocking settings as well, so you won't be able to overclock inside your AMD software if you pick the minimal installation versus the full installation. You don't have metrics or overlay, so you can't use the AMD overlay to check your FPS, your micro stutter rate, your input latency, nothing. And you can't also use the, um, the metrics for that. So you can't use the metrics and on an extent, you can't use the overlay, of course. Then you have simplified menu slash tab. So instead of having, um, for example, the performance tab, then you have the smart technology tab, then you have the gaming tab. And in the gaming tab, you have the graphics and, and display. On the minimal driver, you have everything sim simplified. Every setting has its main tab because once again, it has a lower amount of settings. And like I said before, it doesn't allow per game profiling. So you can, for example, have a, an overclocking for one game, an overclocking profile for another. You can use AFMF in just that game and you can use AFMF or Radeon Super Resolution in others. So basically you can have per game profiles something that you can't do in the minimal installation. In the minimal installation, you have all the display and the graphic settings, but you can't make a per game, a per game profile. So it, it will just work with the global settings, let's say that. Yeah, basically still features most GPU display settings like Radeon Super Resolution, AFMF, like I was saying before. And uh, yeah, we don't have the smart technology tab. So I believe since we don't have the performance tab, we can't actually see the smart access memory toggle. So you can't really enable or disable smart access memory with a minimal installation driver. So that's about it. But overall, yeah, basically you lack the per game profiling and you lack uh, some features, some embezzling, let's say that. But overall, the minimal installation has everything you need. Uh, but since we don't have any kind of performance differences in, in between the minimal installation and full installation overall, Sincerely, I don't think it is worth to go back to to go back to the minimal or display driver only unless unless you're having several issues. Uh, for me, definitely go for the full installation because once again, it has everything you need: recording, streaming, everything, and at the same time, it performs just fine. 
And well, guys, that's all for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video, as that really helps a lot the channel. Thank you very much once again for watching. Leave your comment in the comment section and let me know what you think about the, the differences in between the several driver versions. Uh, well, several, several driver installation methods or installation versions, let's call them that. Because several people have several different experiences and I really want to know what you guys have as an experience. If you really needed to install a driver only because you're, you were having issues. And I really want to know if the issue is actually user related or not. So yeah, leave your comment in the comment section. Once again, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video. And by the way, if you thought, why am I using a coat inside? And this coat seems very, very fluffy, let's say that, but uh, I'm just using a shirt inside and it's like 10 degrees in here. I live in Portugal and most Portugal houses, at least the, the older ones, don't have a general heating system. So yeah, but we're used to it. So it's more or less, it's more or less, yeah, we're used to it. So. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you once again and see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.